the seven secrets real estate gurus won't tell you about wholesaling real estate. Guys, it's Rick in here with Flip with Rick and you know it. Go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the most up-to-date wholesaling information on the internet today. So let's talk about it. I'm going to talk about the seven things that gurus really just don't tell you the truth about wholesaling. And I've taken my 19 years of experience and I've boiled it down to seven. So let's get right into it and let's talk about it. The first and foremost, which to be honest with you is one of the biggest ones is they always talk about a motivated seller. I'm not here to describe what a motivated seller is. You guys know that by now, but Rick, what are you talking about? Motivated seller? I'm telling you, motivated sellers react from an emotional position. So if you ever had that boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, family member, anything like that, that completely operate from their emotional bank account, it's brutal. And although we rely on these customers for what we do, I got to be honest with you, sometimes it's a real difficult situation to be in because they make a decision one minute and I've actually had a contract in my hand driving in the car and they'll call me two hours later and completely change their mind. And I'm just sitting here, how in the heck did I get myself in this situation? And over the years, I've learned that motivated sellers, number one, they're extremely emotional. And number two, they're just, honestly, a lot of them are just crazy. I'm just going to tell it to you. Um, gurus won't tell you about this because it's, it's tough to take it in. And honestly, if you guys know that going into it, you might like take a, take a uh, double take on it. So they're emotional, they're a bit crazy and they're irrational. A lot of the decisions are just shot from the hip on how they feel that day. And for you and me, when we're, we're running a business and we're professionals about it, you are dealing with some of the most difficult people on planet earth. So welcome to motivated sellers. So you need to know it going into it. Uh, gurus never, ever even talk about this. And when I have an emotional, erratic, crazy seller, I know I have to take a ton of time with them. It's not uncommon to spend hours with these people to get them a decision, only to have them change it 10 or 15 times. Now, also, when we have emotional, irrational, crazy sellers, they constantly call you. They have no boundaries. I've had them try to reach out to me at three o'clock in the morning. I've had them call me under the influence. I've had their spouses call me. I've had their entire family call me. I didn't know that <laughs> when I got into this business and I've never seen other gurus talk about it. The bottom line is you will deal with motivated sellers and they're a bit crazy and that's part of the game. And I want you to guys know that going into it. Um, a lot of times you don't know this, but you actually have to wind up being what I call a social worker, meaning you have to help them work through their issues to get them to the point where they want to sell their home. I never want to trick anyone. I never want to go under a false pretense, but sometimes they're so erratic. It's a real challenge. So welcome to wholesaling. Welcome to the motivated seller, the home of the emotional, the crazy and the irrational. If you know it going into it, you can understand it when it happens instead of it being a big shock to you when you lose a deal because you didn't understand how crazy a motivated seller can be. So I want you to know that one. The second one gurus won't tell you about is about other wholesalers. Now, you think it would be a natural fit for people like you and me just to work together. Now, I think I'm the exception. I want to work with everybody and, and there's select few that will do it. But for the most part, in your local area, when you're wholesaling, they teach you to reach out to other wholesalers so you guys can work together, share, um, share buyers to get deals done. The reality is most wholesalers have a scarcity mindset. The ones that locally that aren't trained and working with a real professional and they're difficult. So if you're doing any type of daisy chaining, which means um, you contract a property that's contracted by another wholesaler that has another wholesaler in it, they usually wind up in my local market. They just wind up being disasters. Whenever I assign a deal to a local wholesaler, 
I have to hold them to the same fire as I do a regular cash buyer. The minute you make it an exception for you, I promise they will usually take advantage of you. They'll come up with every excuse. They know the language and quite honestly, they just lie to you. And after they do it enough times, you'll learn that you don't want to get burned. You don't want to walk down this street. And I'm just telling you, I came from a day when I did most of my business with other wholesalers. Fast forward to today with having Zach out in the field and all my acquisitions people, I tell them to avoid all other wholesalers. Just avoid them completely. It's just a waste of time. We never get the truth. They don't know how to comp properties. And honestly, they don't know how to negotiate good deals. If I get a hundred deals presented to me, which is a typical month, if I get one, the three of them just to pass the snuff test, meaning like there's any type of meat on the bone, I'm in shock. And that's how bad it is with other wholesalers. Now, how do we get to this point is an entire other video. And I don't want to go down there now, but I'm just telling you, if you're working with local wholesalers and your gurus trained you how to do it, the reality is they're going to lie, steal and cheat from you. It's just the truth. It's my experience. It wasn't always like that, but you need to know the truth going into wholesaling. I personally will not buy another deal from a wholesaler in my local market because they don't know how to price them. Um, they stretch contracts out way too long and they don't understand that they have to leave some meat on the bones to attract another type of investor or wholesaler. So um, keep your eyes out for local wholesalers. It's not everyone's like that, but the majority of the rule and everybody I talk to you guys out there on uh, on the internet, that seems to be the rule going around the country. So I just want to save you some time. The third myth is go out and get your cash buyers first. I have never understood this. I have been victim of calling on people's signs saying they got a 3-2 or a 2-2 CBS home, um, need cash buyer fast. I call only to find out they don't even have a deal under contract. Um, they were told by the guru to go out and get the cash buyers. Now, in the old days, when the market was really ice cold, you had to do it this way first. But I'm here to tell you, I've been doing this a long time. You guys are wasting your time going out there uh, chasing down cash buyers. What you're doing is you're attracting other wholesalers. And remember, I previously talked about they're going to waste your time. They're going to lie to you. They're going to steal. They're going to cheat. They're going to go behind your back. They're going to talk to your sellers. Listen, I don't want it to be that way, but this is the truth, guys. It happens all the time. I don't share with other wholesalers unless I've done business with them before because I don't know what they're capable of doing behind my back. And by the way, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. JVs, daisy chaining, whatever you're going to do. Guys, your cash buyers list, it's predominantly wholesalers. If you're told to go out and get 500 or 1,000 cash buyers, that's it doesn't work that way. So let me ask you this. So you go out, your guru tells you to go out and get all these cash buyers and you call someone like me and say, Hey Rick, I got great deals. I said, great. Do you have an address for a deal I can take a look at? And then I get this, uh, I, I, well, you know, I'm working on stuff and then you feel uncomfortable and you start the lie. Well, I can tell the lies a mile away. I've been doing this a long time. You cannot start a relationship out with a cash buyer lying to them. It, it's going to screw you over. So the reality is all your work is in finding motivated sellers. Probably 15 to 20% of your time should be chasing down cash buyers. And timing is everything with cash buyers. A cash buyer today is not going to be a good cash buyer six months down the road, even three months down the road. So I'd rather you go out and spend your energy finding motivated sellers and then immediately find cash buyers. Guys, I can find cash buyers in less than an hour in my market. People like good, hot deals. This thing where you got to go out and get this massive buyer's cash list, it's nonsense. It, and you know what the thing is? Everybody keeps doing it and the same reaction from it. My guru told me to do it. Stop doing it, guys. Spend less than 20% of your time chasing down cash buyers. It is not your highest and best calling. You need to be out there marketing, finding motivated sellers. Stop repeating this mistake. If a guru tells you to do it, you're wasting your time in my opinion. So collect cash buyers, be authentic, be yourself. And for God's sakes, don't go out there and lie to them. Tell them you have a deal when you don't have a deal. Okay, I think we're on number four now. This term 
that every guru tells you to go out and how to scale your business. Been doing this a long time, guys. I'm telling you, there's a certain portion of this business that is just not scalable. So number one, Scaling this business so you can tell it, sell it like a giant corporation is a myth. It doesn't work. I've yet to see one sold correctly for any decent amount of money. Nine times out of 10, deals are either sold to the employees, maybe like the general manager of it, maybe the head sales guys, and they're cut a sweetheart deal. And that's it, because the, the reality of this business is, it is the wholesaler that creates the deal. The money is in the assets it buys. So if you're collecting rentals, the cash flow, that will predict the price of the corporation. But the minute you leave your operation, the logic goes out. Most wholesalers don't have a great business plan. It's very, very hard to sell. So now that's the first part of scalability. Number two, scaling your marketing efforts. Guys, I love direct mail and I can scale it, but I have to manage it to a point that my sales teams can process the leads and get contracts. You can actually overspend on marketing if you don't have the right system set up. But scaling comes with a price. There is a huge learning curve. There is a huge cost for it. And these people that are telling you they're running giant SMS operations with cold callers like all over, all over the world and telling you they're running millions of pieces of data. Guys, this stuff is very, very expensive. I have to wonder how much money they're really making. And I don't know about you. I got into real estate to get absolute freedom of my time, do what I want, not work a nine to five job, definitely not work an 80 hour a week. If you guys run a massive scaling business, you're looking at a two to three year commitment, a huge financial commitment, an office, you're talking about payroll, Guys, it's what you keep at the end of the day that matters. If you want to do that, go for it. But understanding it's not as simple as the gurus make it sound. You just scale this. You, you get thousands of leads. You guys go out and write contracts. Your, your office manager does this and your dispo. You just named five people to run your scaling business. What do you think the payroll looks for five high quality people? It's expensive, guys. So you can scale within your business. Don't get me wrong. But like this massive where you can produce, you know, thousands of contracts, I, I've just yet to see anyone do it. Now, I've seen people run it up for a year or two and then they get lost and they shut down. I could go through an entire list of people that are on the Internet that say, hey, we can do this and they stop doing it. You know why? Because to a point, once you scale it, the diminishing returns just doesn't outweigh the cost and the benefits of doing it. So I like to run it small and lean, but I'm just telling you the the scaling is, selling this business is not scalable and running a massive business where you can run in 10 or 12 different states. Guys, there's a reason large corporations don't do this. this there's So you see a little bit of Zillow and some of these offer pads, stuff like that, but um, they only do it like a year or two when the market's good and then they all go away. There's a reason for it because they don't get a return on what they're doing. So let's move on to number five. And this, this one's a big one. I would like to give your guru complete credit on like they're authentic and they figure everything out. Here's the truth. And I'm not even knocking this. Like I've even done it, but I'm telling you, the gurus all to get together multiple times a year, either through what they call a mastermind or like a guru convention. And they share their ideas on how to maximize their coaching students, AKA maximize revenue, which is you. What you'll find is they all start teaching the exact same systems. They all share information and they lack creativity and spontaneity. You want to make sure you find people that go out and go into their marketplace and they actually apply what they do and they bring it back and teach it to you. Now, I, I want you to understand that if coaches are going to a mastermind and seminar on how to be better and they're taking this from that guy and this from that guy, are they truly doing it to make you better or are they just making like a really attractive like coaching program? I only teach stuff that works in my business and quite honestly, Sometimes it doesn't work in other markets, and I know that. But the last thing I want to do is go out in the country, find a guy from California, one from New York, run, one from Oklahoma, 
one from Pennsylvania and just try to implement what they're doing because I don't know if that stuff's going to work. So who's going to test it out? You're going to test it out. That's the problem with gurus. And they're going to take what sticks and what happens in the long run. It's this thing called saturation. Once a great idea gets figured out and it hits the masses and they sell enough coaching programs, you are left there trying to figure out why isn't this working anymore? Well, here's the reason is they all get together and they figure out how to do it. Um, while we're on this note on gurus, by the way, not all gurus are bad. There's some amazing ones out there, but any guru that uses the shiny object syndrome, if you see a luxury sports car, if you see um, them at a vacation resort, I mean, guys, red flag right off the bat. Like, first of all, a good investor is not going to waste his money on luxury cars unless they can absolutely afford it. If they constantly shove a shiny car, I don't care if it's a Lamborghini or what it is, what, you got to ask yourself, why are they doing that? And the reality is they're trying to draw you in on a lifestyle they've so-called achieved. But listen, the people that really do well in life, they don't ever show it. That's just how it works. I've learned the more you show it, the less you have of it. And it's just the truth. Um, I don't go around flashing any of it because number one, I'm humble enough to think that that card has nothing to do with my real estate. It doesn't mean a thing. And to be honest with you, I think it's a really dumb choice because it's a fast depreciating asset. Um, I rather go buy a, a couple rentals than, than spend two or 300 grand on a car. It doesn't even make sense. It, it's ridiculous. And those who show vacation spots, give me a break. You can go out and do your own vacation spots, guys. You don't need this. I just want you to understand you do not want to get into that flashy, flashy objects. So if you're attracted to a car or what they do like this, listen, I love real estate. So I always say, listen, if you want to impress me, just like show me the real estate you live in. And even then, if the real estate's not producing income, like how are you teaching me real estate? But that's my own personal opinion. So let's move on to the next one. Sweat equity. Gurus constantly preach sweat equity. Why do they pre preach sweat equity? I'll tell you why. Because if you pay a guru five or $10,000 for a course, guess what? Their number one obstacle, and by the way, I've learned this in a coaching mastermind. Um, you know, there's coaches out there that teach the coaches now um, that have been in a market that's gone nothing but up for 10 years, and they have no idea what a down market's gonna look like. Another video on that one. Um, so they tell you, well, you know, they say, uh, Mr. Guru, I gave you all my money to teach me the secrets. And he goes, well, I got to be honest, you got to you got to spend money on marketing. But uh, Mr. Guru, I don't have any money left. I gave it to you. I know we have this thing called sweat equity. And that's what's going to make the difference. It's going to make you the best guys. It's a huge red flag. Think about this. Gurus take your money knowing the number one thing that usually gets in the way is your ability to spend marketing dollars. And then he's going to tell you you can spend two or three hundred dollars on marketing. So you'll spend five grand on that program, but two or three hundred on marketing. You got to be kidding me. It's it's a recipe for disaster. So before you join any guru's program, figure out what your marketing plan is. And if the word sweat equity comes up, guys, that means you are going to be busting your butt hard out in the hot sun, out in the miserable cold snow, whatever it is, you're going to be knocking on doors and it's going to be tough. So I just don't understand why gurus just don't tell you up front. The challenge is going to be with a limited marketing schedule. Listen, if you want to pay a guru top dollar and you've got a good amount of money spent in marketing, then that's probably the best way to go about it. But if you're going to give your guru everything or do a payment plan and you don't have any funds or very limited funds for marketing, you guys got to talk about this with your guru because it's a problem. By the way, as I told you, gurus say the number one problem is their students don't spend enough money on marketing. Well, duh, you just gave it. They just gave it to you and now you have it and now they're handcuffed. And I see this cycle over and over again. It's one of the reasons like we change things up here at Flip with Rick and just give you the stuff out for free. So guys, sweat equity is not fun. And honestly, it's it's terrible. So those people tell you, ah, you'll get by a sweat equity. It'll make you a better person. There's some truth to that, but I can be honest with you. Uh, there's more failures than winners in the sweat equity game. It's just how it works. It's the truth. Gurus don't want to talk about it. Um, and the last 
but not least, let's talk about this. The wholesaling in general's reputation, our business is frowned upon. It's It's got a lot of bad press. Um, let's be honest, realtors hate us to death. Um, there is a few realtors that are the exception, but 98% of realtors look at you as competition and you're screwing up my listing. Get out of here, Mr. Wholesaler. We have a bad rap. Go talk to lawyers about wholesaling. They just roll their eyes nine times out of 10. They're going to walk out of there. So I'm just telling you, our industry is very, very frowned upon. And there's a reason for that. There's some people, there's a few bad apples that ruined it for a lot of us, but don't let that shy you away. Actually, it shouldn't be. I just want you to know going into it that real estate is wholesaling real estate is frowned upon because they think that us putting a deal together, making 10 or 20 or $30,000 is ludicrous. And the truth is realtors go out and collect their 6% commission and everybody praises them. But the minute we go out and we broker and put people together, we're either committing a felony, breaking some sort of law, or we're outright thugs and stealing stuff. Guys, the art of us marketing, finding people that need help with their house and matching up with a buyer to put it together makes us the most important person in the transaction, hands down. So when you go out there doing wholesaling, when you talk to your friends, your family, anybody else, I'm just gonna let you know, our business is brutally frowned upon and gurus try to make it so attractive and so sexy, the, the reality is, um, I've been fighting this forever. I just, it's not that I accept it. I just work my way around it. So, um, remember we all start out wholesaling and then we branch and we add more layers onto our investing. But in the beginning of wholesaling, when you use the word wholesalers, a lot of people go, Oh gosh, you're the person that rips people off on their houses. Guys, we know we don't do that, but that is the reputation out there. It's important for you guys to know it. Guys, tell me what you think. Did I miss anything on my top seven list? These are actual things I have to deal with on a daily basis in my business. And I don't find it in any guru's package. I don't see it in their marketing package. I never hear it on stage. So you guys get to hear it first right here on Flip With Rick. Tell me in your comments what you would add to this. Give me your opinion, your thoughts. You think I'm right? You think I'm wrong? Am I missing something? Guys, I'm just giving you the truth. I'm being authentic and telling you how it works in wholesaling. Guys, this is Rick with Flip With Rick. Do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you want to continue to receive the absolute best up-to-date wholesaling information about real estate on the internet today. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.